I bought a bulk load of watercolour paper and I don't like it because I don't like the way it reacts with the watercolour paint. It just doesn't react with the pigments very well. So I now use it just sort of as a thick, nice paper to use with these mixed mediums that I'm using and the way that the different products produce different attributes. So I'm just going to show you a sort of background what I do with these. If you've been watching my videos, I get completely carried away with, I don't know, textures and how the paint sits in them and how you can make different mark making and different sort of atmospheres just by textures and the way that colour mixes together. So these are just gesso on that um, watercolour paper and I simply use that watercolour paper because it's thick but the gesso also imparts this very plastic feel to everything and makes it a completely different product and really gives it strength. These are bits of papers and stuff so it was gessoed and then bits of paper and fabric even is stuck on and then I use the textures to hold the paint. But it's not simple, I use lots of different layers and these are all acrylics and I do it with oils as well and this is Another one which is just really shows up the beautiful textures you can get just with messing around with the gessos. And I have done a video on gesso textures and really then it's up to you. I was amazed I had somebody here came for a workshop and their way of painting was so different to mine. Their way of applying the gesso and it was really interesting. It was a really lovely, very different mark full of his own personality and I you know, really like the way your own personality comes out so much on this and that's the same sort of thing but just like a, a light series of glazes here a light series of glazes here this is fabric stuck on and of course that takes the glazes in a completely different way and then this was dragged over afterwards there's so much potential in this that's sort of apart from all the bits and pieces of paper that we've been doing with momigami and so on so I'm going to apply some gesso onto this as a background for the next piece of work. I've done masses of textures and masses of lovely collage, including the tissue papers and all sorts. So I'm going to apply these and make a whole series of little abstracts. Um, partly to see how the combinations go together. They're partly sketches, but I still really think that I use the best quality things I can for these things because otherwise when you come to actually doing something that you really want to keep and preserve, the rubbish quality stuff don't respond in the same way as the good quality stuff. So maybe if you can, just try and use the best you can. The other thing is they're all quite complex and intricate and detailed so I want a fairly plain background I'm not too worried about the sort of way that the gesso is going to work on the background I just want it to be a sort of texture that doesn't compete with the things that I'm going to put on top I keep all my plastic containers from food so that I've got loads of nice products to use I mean I've got a massive great big system three gesso here because I use it so much and it's obviously I can't use it out of there. I've given it a bit of a shake because the sediment's all at the bottom but sometimes that's nice because as it gets older it gets thicker um, and I do buy things like the chalk and the whiting in order to thicken it as well and then it's a question of just tools that are going to help you spread this. I mentioned before that I've done upholstery and I've got all these beautiful tools hanging about the place. I don't know why since I've done this, I've forgotten what I do. It's one of the bad, bad, bad things about swapping and changing all the time. Because I really like this sort of way it, it stays dry on some places and has gaps in it. You know, I like the funny marks. I don't like the stripes so much. Mark from the edge of the thing. And it's almost worth like, putting one layer on and then dragging another seeing how it responds the second time round. So really that's about it, you know. I don't want this over complicated, so I'm not going to fuss too much. 
I've left some of the watercolour texture showing so I haven't covered it completely and I've left these lovely funny little open marks. If I have a big piece of paper I just seem to need to fill it so I'm going to do a couple of smaller pieces. Somebody very kindly gave me loads of nice of their old watercolour papers that they haven't used. They're mucky so they don't want them anymore so I'm just going to gesso a load of stuff but smaller stuff so that I'm actually restricted because otherwise I just get totally carried away and everything gets huge. Now these are really heavy watercolour papers so I don't really have to worry about stretching them. So I'm just going to cover them up because I want to make lots of different little abstracts using this technique. I'm using all the massive amount of stuff I've created so far because I sort of realised I've put so much time and effort into creating all this stuff. I've got this huge amount of lovely stock to play with. What I'm after as well, what you have to think when you're doing all this stuff, is what is it that you're trying to achieve? And I want sort of organic, naturalistic type gestures or, you know, this sort of, I want this lovely suggestion, even though they're all just abstracts. I want them to refer to those events that happen in nature, you know, transient and slip away from you, but are so intensely beautiful, you know, like just a cloud going over the hills or the moment before a storm or one of those days when you sit underneath a tree and watch the light coming through the leaves. After weeks of work and preparation and learning how the papers behave, I've now got a whole load of stuff that I can use to make abstracts. I get completely carried away with them. Some of these are just so lovely. The mark making and the way the paint sits and everything is fascinating to me. I look at the colours on that. So I'm going to compile a load of abstracts. And there's a dilemma because, you know, do I just go for it? And I absolutely love that as a composition. That's all that I need to do and put something on the background and sit this on, get it all stuck down, leaving its lovely ancient, torn, decrepit life. Or do I make him into small abstracts? So I've got things sort of that are a bit more sellable and I think I'm just not going to. Even though like these, they look so simple, they belie their complexity and the time it takes and how long it's taken me to learn all this. So it's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, when somebody sees this, what do they see? Bits of torn paper. Well, they're not, are they? They're really, really, you know, considered and learnt. Even the background paper, which is going to be covered up mainly, is equally considered and learnt. Achieved through trial and error and expense and time. So I've got colours that I mixed on a previous video. I will put a link to it in the description below and I should be wearing gloves. I'm going to wear gloves. I'm going to try and limit myself to the, the black greys and there's so many different ways of applying paint. You know, you do not need to use a paintbrush. That was a mixed grey. I think it's probably got a bit of yellow in it but not much. And you can see that the different textures on this are taking the colour in different ways. And obviously I'm not that worried about it. I've done all the preparation on this. I've learned what it is that I want to achieve. It's sort of almost just pulling it all together now. When I used to do upholstery when I was younger, we used to apply the French polish to the top and it stops the marks that a brush will make. You know, you can rub it in. And especially if you actually make your cloth into a pad. And what's really nice about what we've done here, I can completely change this. I can add color before it's dry, before I really set it, I can add colour to this and it'll, I'll just show you. And it just removes the colour underneath. I mean, I don't want this colour on there particularly. So I'm just going to see. Look. And it just makes it really interesting. Again, the possibilities of this is such a nice, it's so nice. So I want these on there. I'm going to stick these on there. I do not want to overcomplicate the colour in the background because I don't want it to confuse what's happening on the, with this stuff. So 
so I'm just having a quick look what I think, how I think it's going to look. You see, that's enough to me. As I said, I've done all the hard work. I just need to just finish it all off now, bring it all together. I don't need to do anything else. I'm quite happy with that. That's enough to me, you see. I might take these down a bit, they're too white, but even then the white's nice. So um, that's one down. Again, this bit is so deceptively easy. I mean, there's some really beautiful pieces that I've just messed about with here on a piece of tissue paper. I was going to make a series of abstracts out of this. I'm not, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, but I mean, already there's some really interesting things coming out there. So again, it seems extremely simplistic, but very quickly at this point, you know, because you've done all the work, it just starts to come out and it's almost like don't overcomplicate it enjoy it for what it is i mean they are so gorgeous in themselves so i've spotted this bit that i like so i'm just gonna cut away here and i'm sort of this is just a smaller abstract that i'm gonna make don't care if the edges are all uneven i can just glue other bits i'm just gonna take it up there I mean, it's quite nice even to get that edge on there. So I've got one piece, haven't I? For a lovely little abstract, just as is, with all its mistakes and everything. So if you went to the grey board, would that look nice on the grey board? It just looks lovely. There's so little I need to do with this now that it's done. The only thing is, is of course, you're sort of preparing all these papers. I tend to want to fill every little gap and use absolutely everything, but it's quite good and it's quite releasing to say you don't have to do that. So, really, I want a grey on that one again. The grey and the reds, so that's one. So I ended up with this with a few bits of blue rubbed into the grey and some yellow because I was just thinking what am I going to put on it and I just cannot believe how much this just has a fantastic potential. I hope I'm doing the right thing, I have no idea. And I've got all these beautiful pieces of paper that I can mess with. did really like this one on this side so I think that's what I'm going to do like so and then just decide on what I'm going to do with these bits and pieces whether I continue that on like so. In any case, that one. And then on the more bluey side, which is this side, with the bits of grey and orange still in the background, I thought I'd somehow bung these together. So I'm going to start my collage knowing that the pieces are actually going to come to this sort of size there and there. And I'm going to glue them down with methyl cellulose and book binding glue mixed together. So I've got my methyl cellulose in there, which is pre-mixed, and I'm going to put about 50% book binding glue in there. And what it is, is you then get both the properties. You get the more flexible time gale with the methyl cellulose but you get this good glue that's going to stick down nice and tight and flat with a book binding glue. And I've mixed loads, you're going to think, my goodness, what you're going to be doing? But I'm going to do masses and get a whole load of abstracts done out of all these pieces that I've got together. So, here goes. Oh, even, it feels so nice going down. After all the effort we've put into getting them together in the first place, these were originally put down just with the cellulose paste, so I'm just making sure it's all nice and stuck down. I don't mind it bobbling a bit, I like all the natural forms of it, so just the whole thing is quite nice and relaxed. So tempting to use the other sides because there's so much of it that's nice. What's so good about the methyl cellulose is that it remains porous, doesn't it, after you've finished it. You know, I can add paint to this if I want to afterwards. The book binding glue is less porous. And to sort of, uh, celebrate the, the very sort of rotten look of it all, verdigris doesn't it? Okay just make sure everything's stuck down and even if there's a you know, it's lifting I quite like that as well. This piece was interesting. So I'm going to put that in there. That was a piece of tissue paper. And the backs are just as interesting as the fronts.
sorry I did this without showing you but it, all it is is a piece of tissue paper it's been painted like so and I love the way that the inks went in these lovely splotches and when I put it down onto the piece of card which was just a plain white piece of card like so with a grey glaze over it when I put just one sheet of that tissue paper down I thought it would look like butterfly wings so I'm leaving it just like that and these look like the markings on the moth or a butterfly so that's what I'll call it and then this was another piece that I really liked. I'd done some black pieces previously and it was the back side of the back pieces that I really liked. Where the stains came through and it's the back side of this that I want. So I'm going to somehow use this and I love the sort of broken hole of it. But I want a square. I want to keep myself restricted to a small piece. So what I'll do is I'll rip down through the middle of it. And then I can just overlap those. And the idea being is I'm going to stick it onto a piece but maintain that square. I don't like that edge that I've made. But I can change that. You can alter all that as you go along. But even that's just lovely. I quite fancy a bit more of a staining on this outside edge. And I just want it just to look like it's sort of seeping through from the back. The whole thing I want to just look like it's been left out in the rain or something and that's enough you see so again what colour will I use on the background I mean it's so easy to just play safe and go grey but I must admit I do like the greys so if you flash back to the other one that I've done and for instance this one I find the background sort of over confusing it I think I'll stick to something much plainer I definitely want two squares that's 11. I'm just going to stain this up and see which side I like best first instead of committing first. Right, so I just want a grey. I just want a black grey. And it's really interesting because you hardly need any colour at all on this. You almost just need a dirty cloth. seems such a shame almost to cover it up but that's so lovely in itself and then this is going to be like that on top so that's another one oh, yeah. a close up of it right so what I've ended up with is a whole series of these um, very textured earthy abstracts And they'd be, they're so nice in themselves, just as abstracts. They'd be lovely in a really nice big wide frame, sort of shouting out about themselves. Or they would look really nice as papers in a journal, or as a handmade art book. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again. Bye.